My name is Dave Canigliero. I work for Mastercam. I'm a senior product manager responsible for the milling product line. I've been with Mastercam since 2007, but I've been involved with the Mastercam product since the late 90s. Process Hole for Mastercam 2024 is an exciting addition. It's an evolution in automated hole processing. You are more in control as the programmer because you create templates that you put together that you understand and apply those to your features. Graphical planes have been introduced to hole making toolpaths on the linking page. Uh, graphical planes represent clearance retract top of stock and depth. Just the visual of having the planes on the screen uh, give you a chance to verify a toolpath before you create it. You can catch your mistake very easily. And they make it very easy to teach and to train the software so that new users can come up to speed much quicker. Dynamic Motion Technology in Mastercam 2024 now supports Maximize Engagement. Maximize Engagement puts Dynamic Mill in a very aggressive mode. The tool will get to step over much quicker and at the end of these facing operations not tend to lighten the load at the very end creating excessive passes. Cycle times can be reduced and chip thickness can be more consistent when facing open areas of material. The waterline toolpath in Mastercam 2024 has two nice enhancements. Partial cuts will now filter out the steep areas and it will only add partial cuts in the shallow areas. You have control of those open cuts. You can cut those one way, you can cut those zigzag. The waterline toolpath in Mastercam supports the detect undercut option that was added in Mastercam 2023 to OptiRough and AreaRough. Waterline now detects breakthrough when referencing a stock model, so it will not continue to machine below the stock. Mastercam has always been able to import and export operations. You can store your toolpath knowledge and you can retrieve it through the operations manager on a right-click option. The default configurator takes the idea of import-export and it moves it in line. So for example, if I was creating a raster toolpath, in the moment of setting up all my parameters, I might decide, oh, I want to import a previous one. With the default configurator, I can just use the dropdown while I'm in that raster toolpath setting it up, and I can find my operations file. It'll filter out only raster operations. I'll pick the one I want for maybe a you know, shallow result, and my settings come in. The unified toolpath is many toolpaths in one. You can put it in a parallel mode, a morph mode, a guide mode. But in previous releases, you had to choose one default. With the default configurator, you could set up five, six, a dozen different ways of setting up the unified toolpath and recall any one of those at any one moment. So in essence, there is always one default, of course, but you can have endless ways of recalling and setting up that unified toolpath. And in the same spirit of importing and setting up these toolpaths, in that moment, in line, I can also save the toolpath settings. If I like this and I want to recall it, I can use the default configurator to save these settings, name it, and store it where I want for future retrieval. 